This is the first video in a while in our chicken yard. I just was realizing, I've been getting a lot of comments lately asking for an update or for information or how did this work, how did that work. And I look back and I realize I haven't made a chicken related video in a few months and a lot has changed. It's been a busy summer. Uh, so I thought I'd make a relatively quick update video now and then get deeper into some of the details in a few other videos just to break it up rather than one long video. So stick with us and we're going to review how this chicken system has been working so far this summer. So right off the bat, one thing, if you've been watching our videos for a while, one thing you'll notice is there are different birds in here, like this one. Uh, about a month and a half ago, I was on Craigslist and there was a too good to be true sort of deal. It was two dollars a piece for these uh, one month old birds. They're all uh, barred rock. And so we scooped up every one there was. It turns out there were about 23 of them. If you look over that way, there's some more. Basically, we doubled our flock, which is a little bit crazy. But uh, as we come into the third year, for our black Australorps, they're starting to really taper off in their egg production. And we didn't want to replace them, we don't want to kill them. They're all really nice hens, we're going to let them go for a while. But we wanted to boost up our numbers. And so the other thing you'll notice is that if you've been watching our videos, the last video I did was about growing crops with the chickens. I've since made adjustments on that. I've gotten rid of those rings in here simply because we needed more room for all of these birds. And as I'll show in a cutaway here, they would finally figured out ways of pecking out the bottom of the soil. So the lesson learned for me is at least the first foot of these systems, of these rings, will either need hay behind it or hardware cloth because they can peck through it. And the four foot high fencing, unless it has this, some sort of flap to make it very hard for them to... I've observed them flying and using their feet to climb. With this, they can't get over. And so as you can see, that's worked. We've got corn and tomatoes and soy and sunflowers growing in this area, dedicated. Um, that's worked really beautifully. And the rings where there's no soil to pick at and they're small, work quite well, but the taller rings with soil filled in them, they would have been picking them out from the bottom. And with all these birds, we realized the highest priority is the health and well-being and social comfort of the birds. And with all of the rings, it made it very hard for them to all flow through the space. That's the first highest priority for us. Second highest priority is getting good quality compost through their action, saving us money. And so getting rid of the rings and turning this whole area into a compost generation area felt really worth our while. So the new compost comes in and gets turned and flows with gravity throughout this whole system. Um, so the, the distant third was to be able to grow crops in the space with the chickens. When, if we have more space for this, I now have a lot clearer ideas of how I would design it, but in such a confined space, we needed more running and interaction space for all these chickens. I'm gonna take a look at a few other quick areas in here and then we'll wrap this video up. I'll go more into detail on how we're generating two to four wheelbarrow loads of compost per week during the summer right now in exchange for feeding these chickens for almost no money. That'll be a separate video, but I'll just highlight a few other key things and we'll call it a day. So you can see this is a clear example where the 2x4 welded wire ring has compost added to it and the chickens peck away at the bottom. They kind of erode it from the bottom. And in this case, I planted winter squash pretty amazing it's holding on. What I could do is either pack more compost or put uh, bark or hay or something to protect from the browse, but I'm interested in learning about how these things perform with their interaction, so we're leaving it for now. And the idea, and it's almost working here, is to have winter squash be able to climb up and over and provide shade 
and then crops in the fall. I'll revisit this in the spring, but you can see where I added hay, but I didn't add it low enough, and so the chickens chewed that out. So as of now, it would certainly require more design and more interaction for these rings to be stable with the influence of 50 chickens hammering at it all day every day. That's you, bub. I love these barred rocks, they're really sweet. You can see on the edges here, we've been adding uh, amaranth that was processed by some friends, so they have tons of grain and greens there from all the mustards and Turkish rocket uh, plants that I was saving seed from. I put all the stems in here so this will germinate, that's more protein and food for them. So the compost part of it is working really nicely and having that extra space for this many birds is pretty important. We're also finding that investing in hay is really worthwhile, good quality organic hay laying it out really thick but first putting seed down on the ground. The chickens can't scratch through the hay but I can come through every few days with a hay fork and flip it once and that reveals a bunch of sprouts and meanwhile uh, they've got softer spaces to sit on. You can see the sprouts in there. And this is all still part of the grand picture of generating more compost. So we're doing this upslope of the composting area, so each time they flip and kick, etc., it's slowly breaking down and moving into where the main production happens, which we'll talk about in another video. So this is compost that has been in the system for about 35 days, 40 days. Uh, to start, you know, lots of other videos that I do where I talk about this area in detail. I'm actually going to retire this area and turn it, now that it's so, so rich, I'll harvest the last of the compost out and then have rings in which we sprout different seeds and then move the rings to have the chickens be able to have access to sprouts and greens all through the fall. Uh, this area is too close to the house to be for a raw composting space and it's too small now that we have 50 chickens for me to get in and work with them in there. But right now they're taking old bedding that I've added a ton of seed to and they're working that over. And this is the compost which my wife reminded me to suggest to folks this is not finished finished pure compost that you would put in the garden and seed out we're using it as a side dressing and as a mulch which it works incredibly well for and for bigger seeds like beans and peas and things along that line it works just fine to seed into but we expect little weed seeds to pop out but to get a few of these per week to bring out to the garden in exchange for feeding our chickens is pretty exciting you can see the last of the sprouts in here we add seed to incentivize the chickens to work really hard and these sprouts should solarize and break down but we'll expect some weed seediness. I've got another six to ten wheelbarrows in here. I just process it very lightly with the hay fork. The biggest longest sticks get thrown into another compost ring. We'll let that mellow and then I'll open that up and they get a grand hurrah of earthworms and pill bugs. So in some ways, this is the highest value farming is not vegetative at all, but rather compost rings that have soil life really increase and then they're opened up and the chickens can get all that protein and mineral from the bugs and worms. I'm moving more towards that since this is a shaded area anyway, and we'll see how it goes. But that's our update for now. Doubled the flock, doubled the compost generation, reduced the amount of crops growing in the space, but overall the birds seem really happy. Egg production is okay. We're getting a tremendous amount of compost and the scene is evolving and we're learning a lot. Thanks for watching.